in Hondas today. We will have five heats rather than the normal four. I'll run you through why that is later on as we go through the grid. On pole position then, the 38 of Max House to go alongside him on the front row is Rio Wardali with Max Wheatley and Thomas Potter on row two. Stanley Clark starts in fifth place. He's joined by Alfie Forrester on the third row. Then it's Amy Peacock and Sam Hayes on row number four with Larry Price and Red Lind completing your top ten. Charlie Eibel and Riley sims Ezard, two guests there on row number six. Jake Borey and Isabella Stansmore wilson row seven. Jake Cartledge starts 15th with Tom Drake alongside. Then we have Jensen White and George Ralston on row number nine. The 20 completed by Mason Webster and Ralphie Branscombe with Freddie Walmsley and Max Borey in 22nd. Freddie Hausigo and Alex Lynn are 23rd and 24th. And Isaac Hewburn starts in 25th place. We have 40 runners. That's not a, uh, not a misprint. 40 runners in Honda Cadet. That's why we've got five heats of action. All of our drivers will take part in three of those five. The top 20 in points at the end of those three heats will progress automatically into the A final. The remaining 20 will go into the B final runoff with the top eight then progressing onto the back, taking up 21st down to 28th respectively in the Honda Cadet class on the A final grid at the end of the day. Thank you for everybody that's already joined us and that was waiting on the live stream. Thank you for those that have got in touch on the live chat. And if you do want to join us on the live chat throughout the day, do make sure that you give the Alpha Live channel a subscribe. Once you're subscribed, you're able to join us in the live chat. Let us know who you're watching, who you're supporting, or whether you're just a race fan in general, joining us on the Alpha Live channel and across social networks as well as the drivers make their way out onto track for the first race of the day. Now, you will notice throughout the day, across all of our classes, a lot of new names to the Cadet and Junior Kart Championship. That's because we allow guest drivers to join us on an ad hoc basis and dropping in. And with Hooton Park having running most of the same classes that we run here in the Cadet and Junior Kart Championship, a lot of the local drivers will run through a few of them throughout this first heat in Honda Cadet have taken the opportunity to come and test themselves against some of the best drivers in the country in this Cadet Kart Championship as the drivers make their way around. Honda Cadet, of course, standing start. Junior Pro Kart later on, there'll be a standing start. Our other three classes in Micro, Minimax and Junior Rotax, they are all on a rolling start. So just having a quick look into the live chat as the drivers make their way around and get themselves into position. We've... Uh, <clears throat> got uh, Nan and Grandad on supporting Amy Peacock. She's out in this one going off seventh place. There she is on the inside of row number four with the number 17. You can just see her there with the red helmet with the checker on top. So they get themselves into position. The final runner then, I think, just making their way round and into position. Then the helpers will move to one side. We'll dip back into the comments through all of our races and just for everybody that's showing support and then we'll also give a few updates as to things that have happened in practice that have happened this morning certainly in Minimax we'll come to that when they come out with quite a couple of interesting stories coming out of Minimax as well later on this morning race director just making sure we're all good to go points up to the right hand side where the start lights are and we are away and racing it's a good start from Rio Wardley off the front row he's on the outside second place berth but he's got away enough to get round the outside of House Ago. and the 20 of Potter is round and Ralphie Branscombe has to take evasive action Red Lind is across the grass as well and the opening race of the day is not a good one for at least three drivers unless they can make some really good inroads to get back but Thomas Potter one of the favourites for heat number one going off the second row his spun at the opening corner just didn't get away enough there was three drivers into one corner and at Hooton Park it's a very very tight circuit and it just did not work out for Potter there he is at the back in the 20 coming through he's got a new helmet on Rio Wardley goes defensive and opens the door the train is on the inside and he could get hung out to dry as they move on to the start finish straight for the first time over the line Wheatley Clark and Wardley are shown as the top four a top three as they come over. Sam Hayes there puts his arm up in acknowledgement, although it was side pod to side pod with Rio Wardley, and I don't think there was anything too untowards there. And now 
The leader is Max Wheatley as Stanley Clark pops out the street slipstream. Amy Peacock goes down the inside and up into second place briefly. Will she have track position for the inside of the double apex left? She does, and she then holds on to second place now with Clark in third. Wheatley then continues to lead the way as they're still sorting themselves out into some sort of order in the background. Wheatley Clark and what is now, so it's going to be Wheatley leading from Peacock and the top four have started to break away with Stanley Clark and Sam Hayes going as well. Peacock drops out the slipstream as Wheatley goes to the rumble strip on the outside, which is the quickest way around this Hooton Park circuit. You use the pit, ent the pit exit as the entry into the first corner. Look over the shoulder from Sam uh, from uh, Clark as he comes to the inside to effectively defend off Sam Hayes. And when you get the move done there, you have to get down the inside because if you don't, you leave the door open for the cutback and Hayes is through into third place on his return to the Cadet Kart Championship, having not made the trip down to Landau and don't recall seeing him at GYG either. In the background though, you've got Ward Alley and then that's Larry Price in the 97. Now right on the back of Rio Ward Alley as Ward Alley tries to defend Price is through. The gap, though, back to the, uh, to the four in front may be too much in this eight minute plus one lap unless they start battling in front, which is exactly what's happening there. Clark down the inside of Sam Hayes. We'll see whether he's got the job done. He has. You can just about see it in the... Uh, in the forefront of the picture there. So now it's Wheatley Peacock with Clark. Hayes in fourth place. Price up into fifth in front of Ward Alley, who then goes wide and bounces over the curve with Jake Borey, Tom Drake, Alfie Forrester and Isabella Stansmore Wilson in the background. They're going to have to get into single file because as they come through that chicane, we'll run through the uh, layout of this Hooton Park circuit later on as we watch some of the drivers come out on the outlaps maybe you'll be able to see it a little bit more because at the moment with all the action just going left and right we see Charlie Eibel in the number 10 cart the driver there's a uh, Alfie Forrester spins and there's contact there that's Bory in the 44 who does well to put the anchors on and then there's Mason Webster in the background who splits either side Potters down the inside of Riley Sims Ezard with Alex Lynn in the mix there as well now Tom Drake Tried to run round the outside. Ward Alley puts him out onto the rumble strip. And then that might allow Isabella Stansmore Wilson to come through and get down the inside. Now Drake gets on the inside, takes a huge chunk of curb as well to get to the inside of Rio Ward Alley. Ward Alley's going to close the door. Can Drake make a second move into that first corner? As Thomas Potter starts making his way back through the field, tries to get to the inside there of Jensen White and has that door closed on him fairly firmly by White as is it's White's right to do so and now Ward Alley goes wide and allows Stansmore Wilson to come through. She's going to be on the outside though. Ward Alley will get the inside of the corner but then will potentially run wide out onto the run. The strip does so but Stansmore Wilson follows in the wheel tracks with his contact in the background over the front of Alex Lynn and over the front of Mason Webster is the 69 of House Ago and Alex Lynn doesn't look like he's got a throttle cable has snapped on that one he's pumping the throttle and it looks like Alex Lynn will end the first race of the day in retirement as uh, House Ago in the 69 car, it's Freddie. He's in 19th place with Webster in 20th. They drop a few places back behind as he came through there. Now they'll all come over the line again and sort themselves out. As that we see Freddie Wormsley in the five, another guest driver behind him as well. Red Lind, who won the Hooton Park IKR here two weeks ago. Yellow flag is out at the double apex left where that incident with Lynn was. That's back in now, though, as the car is safely out of the way. And... Uh, Everybody uh, is free to go racing with two minutes and 50 seconds remaining of this opening heat of the day. And now Thomas Potter still trying to find a way past Jensen White. Tried there on the previous lap and this time does and then moves to the inside to defend the cutback. He's now behind the 38 of Max House ago. And will Potter get the move done down into the hairpin? He does down the inside two places in two corners and Potter is up from 12th. And now finds himself inside the top 10 behind Charlie Eibel's number 10. I believe that should move him just there. Just having a quick look where Eibel is because uh, Max Hausigo, who they've just managed to find a way through, was classified in 10th last time but could have dropped down. So it might not be, might not be that Potter is that high up as they all come over the line. Eibel is in 10th then, so it's Potter in 11th. 
Although now Potter goes down the inside of Charlie Eibel into that first corner. And he is now indeed inside the top 10. As we said last lap, he was actually in 11th. So now he's up, but now he's got a bit of a gap to Rio Wardley. As the rest of the field spreads themselves out here at Hooton Park. It's a tight, twisty circuit. Basically means that if you, you've got to get the job done, because if you don't, you are likely to get overtaken. Now, at the front, the top two have pulled away. It's Wheatley and Clark with Hayes now in third place in front of Amy Peacock. That came through on the classifications they came over. So Hayes in third, Peacock fourth. Price closing in with Jake Borey, another local driver that runs really, really well in the IKR Championship here at Hooton Park. And there's been a change for the lead into the hairpin at the bottom. Stanley Clark moves through on Max Wheatley. A little helmet taps to suggest that they want to work together to move away, but they've got a second at least to Hayes and Peacock. And then a similar time back to Price and Borey. So I can't see Max Wheatley wanting to spend too much time behind Stanley Clark because whilst you get in the slipstream, you can't pull out until they're definitely over the start finish as Wheatley goes down the inside, Clark closes the door. I think if that was the last lap, Wheatley might have kept the foot in, but then bounces over the curbs, loses a few cart lengths, and that at the very least gives Stanley Clark a few corners of respite as they make their way into that double, into the right-hand hairpin for the third corner here at Hooton Park. Then it's a double apex left. You don't go near the curb on the inside because that will compromise the exit round the left, which is the second. Then you go through as you came, which sorts it out into single file. And then it's the right-hand final corner. Clark, though, since he's managed to get past Max Wheatley and Wheatley took that chunk of curb, Wheatley hasn't been able to close the gap back in. And now Sam Hayes is beginning to move away from Amy Peacock. Time has elapsed, so this will be the penultimate lap of the Hooton Park circuit. And Larry Price is closing in on Amy Peacock. Peacock with a look over the shoulder. A nervous look as well from Amy Peacock. Then in the background, it's Tom Drake, a lonely seventh for him. Stands more Wilson Potter and Rio Wardley completing the top 10 as it stands. As they make their way through, they'll see the last lap board this time round here at Hooton Park. And the first race of the day will be consigned to the history book. Still though, 35 seconds of action 42 as Wheatley comes over the line with a personal best. Borey as well sets one, but he's on the back of this train with Peacock and Price. There's, there's, there's your battle for the lead. There's enough, and that's the sick. The, uh, Jake Borey has spun out of sixth place. Through comes Tom Drake for sixth. Borey should recover to seventh. All being well, I don't think there's enough there, but now Larry Price is on the outside of Amy Peacock. Not sure he's going to be able to keep the foot in round there and has to slot back in. You don't go round the outside that double apex left. Certainly in heat one where there's a lot of risk to be had and now Peacock goes defensive. Stanley Clark though, he's won races here in the IKR and he's going to win heat number one here at Hooton Park. Holds off from Max Wheatley in the background there side by side over the line. Hayes gets third in front of Peacock and Price. Tom Drake's fourth. Borey will come through I think to recover in seventh place but crosses just in front of Isabella Stansmore Wilson, Thomas Potter and Jensen White completing your top 10 in front of Rio Wardley, Charlie Eibel, Max Housigo, Jacob Cartledge and Riley Sims Ezard, your top 15. The top 20 then completed by Lind, Borey, Housigo, Forrester and Webster with then Ralphie Branscombe who had that, that opening lap excursion across the grass. He's in front of Isaac Hubern, the only driver not classified. Five laps in, Alex Lynn, part of that incident which... Uh, saw Freddie House go, go over the front of him and also then Mason Webster have to take evasive action as well.